Uh, the time we celebrate uh, Jesus being born, and uh, it's the end of the year. This message is going to be from Luke 1 and 2, uh, which is the story of Emmanuel. It's God with us. And there's 132 verses, 80 in Luke 1 and 50 in Luke 2. And I'm going to, uh, to, to do the idea of God with us based on uh, verses in Isaiah, in Isaiah 42, Isaiah 43, and 48. God says three times, forget the former things, good and bad, things where you messed up, things where you did good. I'm doing a new work, and it's going to spring forth. In uh, Isaiah 48, uh, he adds that the word is going to go out of my mouth, and suddenly it's going to come to pass. And uh, so, so the idea of uh, forget the old, do the new. Also in Isaiah 48, it says, uh, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to, to profit, to prosper, and I lead you in the way that you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commandments, your peace and prosperity would be like the, the, the roaring waves of the sea, and your descendants would be like the sand. And so, so 12 times in the, in the Amplified, it uses peace and prosperity together in the same verse. It, 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 the next one is in Isaiah 58. Uh, you pray and fast to break the bonds of, uh, of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke. If you give your food to others, your, your clothes to help others, then your peace and prosperity will we'll go again so so the idea of the old and the new peace and prosperity and to prepare uh i learned something this morning that i'd never learned before which is that uh the only time that you hear about the wise men is in matthew it starts off uh, mary and joseph four times the angel of the lord appeared to them a dream gave them instructions joseph take mary joseph go to egypt uh and and then it talks about the wise men. It doesn't talk about the shepherds. In Mark, it starts off with John the Baptist uh, baptizing Jesus in the Jordan River and how he's prepared. Luke only talks about shepherds. And, and I never knew that. It doesn't mention shepherds and wise men together. Uh, in, in Luke's account, it starts in verse uh, chapter 1, verse 4. They think uh, Luke did Luke did both Luke and Acts, and they believed that they were trial documents for Paul when he was going up for before Caesar. It was his defense, and so it was very detailed. and And uh, Luke's account is scholarly, and he says, "My purpose is that you may know the full truth and understand with certainty and security against error the doctrines of the faith." So his is the chronological account. And so there's nine key uh, situations in, in Luke where there's a supernatural uh, contact. It starts in Zechariah, an angel appears to him, but later he's also filled with the Holy Spirit. In Mary, an angel appears to her, and also she's later filled with the Spirit. Elizabeth is filled with the Spirit. Everybody who's filled with the Spirit they don't draw attention to themselves. They immediately and boldly start proclaiming Jesus and glorifying God. So it's not to draw attention to you. It's to give you a bold witness. Uh, the shepherds, angels appeared to them. There's no wise men because Jesus was probably two when the wise men caught up with him. That's why Herod said, kill all the babies two and under, because he was a child walking around talking when the wise men came up. Simeon, he was filled with the Spirit. God gave him a promise. You will not die until your eyes see the Messiah. So he went to the temple and it was revealed to him, this is the Christ, the Messiah. And so he got the peace and prosperity. God, you fulfilled your word to me. And so now I can die in peace. For the first time ever in a Perry Stone Manifest broadcast, he made a statement that the, that the uh, Antichrist, the false prophet, and the beast are alive right now. And, uh, and I believe that's true. I believe we're in the end time. Then Anna was filled with the Spirit. 
And Jesus, of course, was filled with the Spirit. So uh, the first one, Zechariah, what was old? He's a uh, righteous man. Both he and Elizabeth were of the tribe of Aaron and the high priestly tribe. They were righteous in the sight of God. They followed the commandments. But they, the problem was there was no child. They were old, very old, far advanced in years, and she was barren. And what was new, in response to his prayer, the number two angel, God's got ten thousands and ten thousands of angels, and the number two angel appears to Zechariah in response to your prayer for your barren wife. God heard your prayer, and she and and, and about a year from now, she's going to conceive and give you a son. And uh, the peace and prosperity is that not only is he is he going are you going to have a son? And so God's going to fulfill the promise and take away the reproach. But you're going to have joy and exultant delight, and many are going to rejoice over his birth. So he's going to be an honorable person. He's not going to end up in jail or hurting people. Mm -hmm. He's going to be great and distinguished, but he must drink no wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with and controlled by the Holy Spirit even when he's in his mother's womb. So all this argument about is it a mass of tissue or is it life? I think God answers that here. If the baby can be filled with the Holy Spirit in the womb, then it's a living being. And if you kill it in the womb, then that's murder. And so uh, John the Baptist, he's going to turn back and cause to return the sons of Israel to the Lord our God. He's going to go in the spirit and power of Elijah. And he's going to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the sons. He's going to restore it. He's going to turn the hearts of the sons back to the father. There's not going to be a millennial group. And the and the and the uh, and the baby boomers. That's good. Right? He's going to turn their hearts That's good. back together, and he's going to he's going to walk in the knowledge of the holy love of the will of God, and prepare us, prepare the people, to be in the right moral state for the Christ to come. And when you think about John the Baptist, he didn't have a feel good message. He was a rough character. He was in, in camel's hair and ate locusts and wild honey. That's right. Aren't you glad they didn't tell us what Jesus ate? <laughs> if Jesus if Jesus ate oatmeal with lumpy raisins in it, then every mother would say, well, you got to eat oatmeal with lumpy raisins because if Jesus <laughs> did it, we'd... And so God spared us having to eat lumpy, lumpy raisins and oatmeal. That's right. right. And, and we didn't know anything that he ate except he ate fish and bread. All right, all right. And uh, he took communion. So... So the angel is nine foot tall. He appears to Zechariah. He tells him he's the number two man. He said, God has heard your prayer. Your wife's going to deliver. He's nine foot tall. And Zechariah challenges him, how do I know that this is accurate, that this is going to take place? Yeah. I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God, and my words are of a kind that will be fulfilled in the proper time. And to show you you are not going to speak for nine months until the baby's born. Actually, it took uh, Elizabeth about a year. So for that whole time, and he was deaf and dumb. Mm. Because later when they, when they go to him and say, the baby's born, what do you want to call him? They have to make signs to him. Oh, wow. If he could hear, you wouldn't have to make signs. So he was deaf and dumb. And... and they, mo they motioned to him in science, and when he said, his name shall be John, then the Holy Spirit came on him, and he prophesied more about what John the Baptist is going to do. And it goes on for like 12, 15 verses. It's outstanding. So now we go to, to Mary. So, so that was, that was Zechariah. Uh, the old was faith. The new was God answered his prayer, the peace and prosperity. Your son's going to do good. He's going to restore people. Next is, uh, is Mary. Uh, and, and God could have chosen, why did God choose Mary out of all of the virgins that were available? When she gets filled with the Holy Spirit, she talks about uh, Abraham's covenant, about being the seed of Abraham, about God fulfilling this promise, and, and God humbles the proud, but he gives, he gives grace to the humble. Right. So she knew the word of God. Mm, that's good. And... and, and Mary had to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. If God could force people to do stuff, he'd force everybody to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. He'd force them to go to church. He'd force them to tithe. 
And when the angel said, here's the dream, here's the future for you, Mary, she had to agree in faith just like we do. That's right. Let it be done to me according to your word. That's good. Right? And that's faith. Amen. Amen. So, so uh, he appears to Mary and he says, uh, he, gives her, he gives her the message of peace. God is with you. You're blessed. You're favored. You have found grace, free and spontaneous and absolute favor and loving kindness with God. And listen, uh, you will become pregnant and you'll give birth to a son and you'll call his name Jesus, which is the uh, Hebrew form of Joshua, which means Savior. Mm, that's good. And he will be great. So, so Mary gets a word too. She gets peace and prosperity. He's going to be called the Son of the Most High and the Lord God will give him the throne of his forefather David. God made a promise to David that he would... He, David is going to sit on the throne in Israel during the millennial reign. Mm. For a thousand years, David had a heart to know God, and God is going to let him be uh, king over Israel, and Jesus is going to be king over all the kings of the earth. But he's bringing David back and letting him reign for a thousand years as king again. Uh, the angel said to you, the Holy Spirit... Uh, is going to come up on you and the power of the Most High is going to overshadow you and the holy thing to be born of you is going to be called the Son of God. Mary doesn't challenge you. Mary questions. I don't understand. I'm 15 years old. I've never had intercourse with a man. I don't understand how can I get pregnant and have a child because I don't know a man. So she's asking a clarifying question, which is different than how do I know this is going to be true? Right. Right, right. And so he says the Holy Spirit's going to come on you. And and so Mary was faithful. That's the old. The new is she's going to be a vessel to be uh, uh, to bring in the Son of God. Now Elizabeth, the old was she was she was old, but she was righteous. And when uh, Mary goes to visit her. Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, and the baby leaped in her womb. This is John the Baptist. And Elizabeth was filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit, and she cried out with a loud voice, Blessed, favored of God above all other women are you, Mary, and blessed and favored uh, of God is the fruit of your womb. And how should I be deserved this honor that I should be granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? So even Elizabeth recognized that we needed the Lord. For the instant that the sound of your salutation reached my ears, the baby in my womb, John the Baptist, he leaped for joy. So you were blessed uh, to be envied as he is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of the things spoken to her from the Lord. Is that what we're required to do? Are we required to believe that what God has spoke, he's going to fulfill and bring to pass? It's going to take time, just like, just like when uh, he, he tells Simeon, you're going to see the Messiah with your own eyes. How many children do you think he saw at the temple? How long did he have to wait? Wow. Yeah, that's good. A month, two months? And he had to keep asking, Holy Spirit, is this the yeah. child? Is this the one? Is this the one? Man, I've been doing this for 20 days. That's I'm good. tired. I want, to, I want to go fishing. I want to go on a, on a family vacation. But God, when's it going to happen? That's good, right? And so, so, so you can't please God without faith. And we think these things happen automatically, but it takes time. And then the Holy Spirit reveals to him, this is the one. That's good. And he holds the baby up and says, my eyes, you have fulfilled your word to me, and my eyes have seen the Messiah. And now I can die in peace. So Mary, this is why, this is why God uh, chose Mary. Uh, and Mary said, my soul magnifies and extols the Lord. She's quoting Psalms. Okay. She knows the word because Jesus is going to listen to his mom. We only hear about Mary and Joseph uh, for the time that he was 12 years old. They went to Jerusalem. Don't hear from Joseph again. Maybe he died. Uh, Mary was a single mom. Got four boys, at least two girls. It names the boys. It says his sisters. So there's at least uh, Jesus and five stepkids. And she knew enough about him that when they go to the wedding, 
all that stuff about Jesus doing a miracle when he was a, a little boy and, and, and playing soccer and some boy was sick and he bumped him on the soccer field and he got healed. All of that is incorrect because it says in uh, that that his his miracle at the wedding of Canaan was the first miracle that Jesus did after he was anointed with the Holy Spirit. Oh, wow. So so there couldn't have been anything else. And Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. That's still a good word for us. Mm, that's right. If he says, I want you to be a youth pastor, then that's what you do. You might have wanted to sing. You might have wanted to travel. That's right. You might have wanted to open a shoe store. But he said, I want you to be a youth pastor. And whatever he tells you to do it, you do it. That's right. Amen. So, so here's why Mary was, was chosen as the mother of God. My soul magnifies and extols the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Isn't that something? Mary, under the Holy Spirit, recognizes that she needs a Savior. There is no co-redeemer. Jesus died for our sins. Jesus rose from the grave. There is no, there is no redemption through Mary. She was the vessel. You got a, you got a glass bottle. You put, you put, Mogan, uh, you put uh, Strawberry Hill wine in it that's 99 cents. It's it it's just in the vessel, so it's the wine itself that has the value. Right. But if you take if you take fifteen hundred dollar champagne and put it in the same bottle, the bottle is only a vessel. It's the wine inside that's, that's right. worth the worth the cost. That's good, Rick. So, she said, God has looked upon my low station, my humiliation, but from now on, all generations will call me blessed and declare me happy and to be envied. Yes, we will call you blessed because you obeyed God. And you had to activate your faith. If she would have said, no, I don't want to get pregnant with the, with the, the Son of God, and God would have had to raise up somebody else. He who is almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He's to be venerated in his purity, his majesty, and his glory, and his mercy. Mary knows the word. Right. In his mercy, his compassion and kindness is towards the miserable and afflicted, and it's upon those who fear him with godly reference. Does that include us? We make a choice to reverence God and to fear him and to worship him. She keeps going. He has shown strength and he has made might with his arm. God scatters the proud and the haughty by the imagination and purpose and designs of their hearts. He puts down the mighty from their thrones and exalts those of a low degree. Uh, that's a psalm that, that, that God raises up people from the dung hill. Mm. We look at them and don't think they're worth anything. That's right. But but God does the mysterious. He Come brings on, down man. he humbles the mighty and he exalts those who humble themselves. Amen. He has filled Mary keeps talking. She's talking for ten, twelve verses. God has filled and satisfied the hungry with good things, and the rich he sent away empty handed without a gift. And he is God has laid hold of a servant Israel to help him in remembrance of his mercy as he promised to our forefather Abraham. She knows the covenant. She knows the blessing. Can we say that we are the seed of Abraham and the blessing of Abraham was ours? Mm, that's good. Absolutely. We can, we can say that. So, so Mary was righteous. What's new? Uh, she finds out she's going to be the mother of the Son of God, one in honor. My soul magnifies God. She gets peace and prosperity. She talks about God's goodness. She talks about the covenant. She talks about the blessing. She talks about God humbling the proud and exalting others. Zechariah, uh, Zechariah, he, uh, here's, what's, here's what's old on him. He was, uh, he was deaf and dumb. And so it's time for, for John the Baptist to be born and, and all the relatives, ooh, you've got to watch out for them. <laughs> All the relatives are saying, you know, it's it's tradition, it's tradition that they got to be called Zechariah Jr. They got to be called after your name. On, we man. don't have anybody in the family who's named John. What are you doing? It's going to inter interrupt the family, and and uh, and and Elizabeth honors her husband. Let's see what Zechariah wants to call him. They they make signs for Zechariah because he's deaf and dumb. He writes on the tablet, his name is John. As soon as he obeys the prophetic word from Gabriel, his mouth is open. This is verse 64. And at once, Zechariah's mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, 
and he began to speak, uh, he's blessing, he's praising, he's thanking God under the Holy Spirit. He's not drawing attention to himself. And awe and reverential fear came on all the neighbors. And all these things were discussed throughout the whole hill country. And all who heard them laid them up on their hearts saying, whatever's going to this little boy be, because the hand of the Lord is so evidently on John the Baptist protecting and aiding him. In Ezra, 17 times, it says that the hand of the Lord is on me for good. Oh, wow. And one time it says the eye of God is on me that protects me from my enemies. Now here's Zechariah. His father was filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit, and he prophesied, blessed, praised, and extolled, and thanked be the Lord, the God of Israel. Everybody's praising and thanking God under the Holy Spirit, not drawing attention to themselves. That's good, right? because, because God has come, he's brought deliverance, he's brought redemption to his people. He's still doing that today. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God has raised up a horn of salvation, a mighty and valiant helper, the author of salvation for us in the house of David, his servant. This is as he promised by the mouth of his holy prophets. So, so God's fulfilling his promises. They never go away. Uh, the last verse of First uh, Chronicles 17, 27, it says what God has blessed is blessed forever. Oh, my God. It never goes away. Oh so God. if you were blessed, you're blessed now. <laughs> This, that we should have deliverance, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all those who detest and pursue us with hatred. That's something that we can claim now because there's uh, people who want to kill us for the name of Christ. God makes true and shows the mercy and compassion and kindness promised to our forefathers and remembers to carry out his holy covenant to bless, which is all the more sacred because it's made by God himself. Deuteronomy 30, I set before you life and good and blessings or death and evil and curses, you choose. If you make no choice, the choice is already made for you. My God. Uh, wow. John, John 3, 17. <laughs> uh, John 3, 16. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. 17. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world should be saved through him. 18. Uh, this is the judgment, that he who believes in him is not judged, but he who does not believe in him has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's right. So, so God came to, to make true, to show the mercy, compassion, and kindness promised to our forefathers. He remembers and carries out his holy covenant uh, to bless, which is all the more sacred. It's made by God himself. That covenant is sealed by oath to our forefather Abraham. Here's Mary under the Holy Spirit talking about the covenant of Abraham to bless. Here's Zechariah. Boy, he's talking for 10, 12, 15 verses, talking about the covenant of Abraham to bless, to grant that we being delivered from the hand of our foes, the hand of our enemies. That's right. Who's our enemies? It's not people. It's a spirit of fear. It's a spirit of sickness. It's a spirit of poverty. It's a spirit of worthlessness. And he delivers us from the hand of our enemies. Glory to God. To grant that we, uh, that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies, we might serve him fearlessly in holiness and divine consecration and righteousness in accordance with the everlasting principle of right with his presence all the days of our lives. They made a they made a soap opera out of that during the day, all the days of our lives. Is that right? But it came from Zechariah. <laughs> you know, the, you know the idea where women say, "You never listen to me." Yeah. It probably started with Elizabeth. Oh my God. Because because Zechariah was quiet, couldn't hear nothing for for a whole year, and and, and couldn't speak, couldn't talk, and Ooh. and and she's the one who started it. You never listen to me. Why well, can't hear you, baby? What are you saying? <laughs> And you, little one, that's a, that's a, that's from the Rick Hall unauthorized version of the Bible. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that was real inspiration, but, but it's sure funny. <laughs> and you, little one, you shall be called a prophet of the Most High. He's prophesying <laughs> under the Holy Spirit, and you shall go on before the face of the Lord to make ready His ways, 
to bring and give the knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness and remission of their sins. So it's not just to say you're wicked, repent, right. but the kingdom of heaven is at hand and you don't have to be separated from God. You can have remission of your sins now because of and through the heart of tender mercy and loving kindness of our God, a light from on high will dawn upon us and visit us. Who's the light? That's Jesus. That's John 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. There was a light that was shining in the darkness. That's Jesus. So he's going to bring us the light. And this light is going to shine and give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. You know, shadow never hurt anybody. Oh, wow. Shadow of a dog never bit anybody. Mm. Shadow mm. of a lion never, never ate anybody. That's right. It's just a shadow. That's Psalm 23, you know, uh, and uh, so so we're going to have a straight line in the way of peace. And the little boy grew and became strong in spirit. So, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We're going to forget the old. We're going to forget the disappointments, the pains and the hurts. We're going to forget the good things that we did. But we know that you have them recorded in the book of remembrance all of the good that we did, all of the seeds that we planted, that that it's going to it's going to point people to you. The new is it's going to spring forth. You have better planned for us. Our best days are in the future. And and you want people to be saved and come into a knowledge of the truth. And there's people that will listen to to, to Reverend Adrian Hill that will never give me the time of day. And there's people that I can talk to who wouldn't give him the time of day, but he does his part and I do my part. And at the end of the day, people get saved and delivered and restored and healed. And the hearts of the sons get turned back to the fathers and the hearts of the yes, fathers yes, yes. restore their sons. We don't have millennials and the baby boomers. We have one voice, one yes, accord. Yes. We glorify the God and Father of our oh, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Father, you came to give us peace and prosperity not to walk in fear, not to walk in lack. Yes. You want us to minister. You want us to point people to your covenant, the promises that you made to Abraham. And in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So, Father, we thank you for this word. It is Emmanuel. It is God with us, and we activate our faith. Whatever you tell us to do, we're going to do it quickly. We're going to do it thoroughly. We're going to do it with integrity and excellence. And at the end of the day, people will recognize that you are the creator and sustainer of the earth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow, Rick, I got to say, uh, 14. Wow. You know, that was powerful. You know, I, 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 you know the God gave me you know, the spirit you know, to have you do this today, you know, and... Wow, I feel the spirit go through my body. I don't know about you, but this is this is deep, you know. This is wow. Mm. Wow. Mm. Anyway, Rick, uh take time here. We're gonna do this right quick in the next verse you heal with me. You loved me through my hood. The next verse you would be the Alderman Terry Kennedy. Rick, take us out here right quick. You love me through my bed. You love me through my hood.